O my Lord, make me brave, 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 and make my task easy for me, easy for me. A faith step onto the cloud of Islam, and you will discover the light of Iman. Proclaim this message entrusted to you, and the cloud of Islam will carry you. 1400 years of Islam, or a thousand years of Islam, the Jews were living among the Muslims. The golden age of the Jew was the golden age of the Muslims. The best time that they ever had was under the Muslims in Spain. And for a thousand years, the Christians have been persecuting the Jews. Every Easter, the Christians reminded themselves that these are the killers of our God. Kill them! Kill them! Kill them. You know, you are our cousins, come, live. And they went and lived. Peace. 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 In a thousand years, there had not been a single riot against the Jews in any Muslim land. An individual Jew might have killed an individual Arab. And an Arab might have killed a Jew. But as a race, as a people, kill the Jews. Never. See, if that entitles you to that country, because your forefathers, David and Solomon, had it, then we would be entitled to Spain. I said, you know, my forefathers ruled Spain for 800 years. 800 years, the Muslims, and we have to go through there and see the, the monuments that my forefathers built. They're still there. If we had the power, can we go and reclaim Spain? He said, look, who built the Alhambra? You built it? My forefathers built it. So we go and claim it. I said, the Dutch... Can they go back to Indonesia? He said, look, our forefathers ruled it for 300 years. The Portuguese, can they come back to Mozambique? They said, look, our forefathers ruled it for 500 years. Nonsense. But he says, dear dad, we have it. it. Belongs to us. You know, we got it now. I said, right, how did you get it? Might is right. Is that is your principle? That by four farms you took it away? Who are Arabs? Force. Why are you complaining? If by force, if you are entitled, if justifies you taking away, possessing somebody else's property, then by force of arms they can reclaim it. What are you crying about? And the discussion went on for an hour. And this boss of mine with the other Jews, you know, they had sins. They're good hearted people. Among them, Allah says. So he says, you know, Didat, we didn't know that the Arabs had a case. This is his confession. We didn't know. In other words, they have programmed from childhood into believing that this is ours. This is ours. Emotionally, this is ours. So anybody wants to defend his property, says, no, you have no right. You are, bar you are barbarian. You are thieves and brigands. You have stolen our land. So we have a right to repossess it. He says, Didat, I want you to write this. And I will publish this in my Temple David magazine. It's a new, new synagogue of the Reformed Jews in Durban. He was the editor of this Temple David magazine. He said, look, you write what you are telling. You write, and I will publish. No, the writing is very difficult for me. Talking is very easy. I like to talk. But writing, what a burden it is, I know. So I said, he said, no, no, read that. You write as you speak, and I will improve it for you. I know he meant well. But we never came to that. What do you think happened the next day? From there on, in the firm? You expect me to be fired, no? From the day onwards, I have become Mr. Didat. <laughs> Previously, it's Didat, Didat. Now it's Mr. He comes in the morning and says, Good morning, Mr. Didat. He goes for lunch and says, Good afternoon, Mr. Didat. Good evening, Mr. Didat. Didat becomes Mr. Didat. Promotion. So in the firm, the other Jewish managers, they say, the boss comes and tells them, say, you know, this guy here, dispatch clerk, dispatch clerk is a lowly job in a white firm. They say, you know, this guy here, man, he made rings around us. You see? So he must have shared it with the other Jewish managers in the firm. He says, the guy, and the manager of the clothing department, Mr. Baynard, 
not the Jew. He calls me. I was wearing a white dust coat on a trade. He says, come here, do that. I say, yes, sir. He says, you know, you may drink out Mr. Beer. I hear. But you know, you can't do that to me. He says, you know, as for Ishmael, Ishmael was a bastard. Look, this, this is how they, the, the brainwash program. As for Ishmael, Ishmael was a bastard, he says. You know, an Arab would have put a knife through him. <laughs> but we couldn't afford to do that. So I said, Mr. Baynard, look, why don't you come home? We'll sit down and we'll talk. You know, bring your wife along and your friends will have meals together. I said, ah, you can't do to me what you did to Mr. Beer. I said, who's talking about doing anything? You come home, hmm, not interested. And every time I get over Mr. Baynard, I said, you know, my wife, I told her, and she is looking forward to receiving you and your wife, come home. Every time I said, look, Mr. Baynard, come, you know, we are waiting for you. So he was persuaded. He comes. Mr. and Mrs. Baynard. Mr. and Mrs. Gospel Church. Christians and two Jews. They come along. All right, same treatment. Same treatment. Feed them well. Take them to the masjid. Bring them back. I said, now we have teas and samosas. So they're having teas and samosas. So I said, maybe now the guy softened. You know, the tea and samosa, I never meals. You know, very good. It might have done the job. So I'm thinking. I said, Mr. Baynard, you remember you told me in the, in the shop that Ishmael was a bastard. He said, of course. I said, you still stand for that? He said, of course. I thought the samosas had done the job, but it hadn't. <laughs> so I said, all right, Mr. Baynard, tell me now. According to the religion of your religion, Judaism, which is better for a man to marry his own sister and beget child by her, or marry a born woman, a slave woman, a negress, and beget child by such a woman? He said, no, 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 the negress is preferable. According to the religion of Judaism, instead of having your own sister as a wife, you rather have a slave woman, a negress, a born woman. Because that is what they insinuate, that Hajra, who was actually a princess of Egypt, Which is better as a wife, your sister, the slave woman, according to your religion? He said, no, the slave woman is preferable. He said, very good. I said, you see, according to the laws of eugenics, inbreeding, which is better for you to have your own sister as a wife, or you have a slave woman, a born woman, a negress? He said, no, the negress is preferable. I said, according to your common sense, which is preferable, your own sister or this negress? He said, no, the negress is preferable. Very good. No, the answers are right, correct. I said, you see, Mr. Baynard, when Abraham and Sarah, husband and wife, when they went to Egypt, he says, and Abimelech, Abimelech, I'm quoting from Genesis chapter 20, verse 12. You can check it out. And Abimelech, the king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. See, he goes there and... Uh, this Sarah was a beautiful Jewess, Hebrew woman, beautiful thing. So he's asking Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, according to the Bible, say, this beautiful woman, what is she to you? So Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, according to the Bible, he spoke a lie. He said, she's my sister. So if she's your sister, well, send her in to the harem. So he had to send her in. And things went wrong that night, you know, and the fellow couldn't come right with Sarah. We don't know what happened. But uh, next morning, he's saying, look, man, because of this woman, I had a sleepless night. Tell me, what is your connection with her? So he said, she's my wife. So why did you lie to me? Why didn't you tell me? I wouldn't have done anything like that. And Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam says, according to Genesis chapter 20, verse 12, he said, and yet indeed, means without doubt, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. It's a different mother, but the, it's the father's seed. And she became my wife. So she is Abraham's sister, seed coming from the same father. And you said, according to Judaism, according to eugenics, according to common sense, that the negress was preferable. And you say Ishmael is a bastard because he's a
child of Hagar to Hagar, a slave woman. So I said, if Ishmael is a bastard, then Isaac is a greater bastard according to your standards. <laughs> Look, you have a right to speak like that. We dare not speak about the prophets of God, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam. He was a prophet of God. Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salam was a prophet of God. But now you're arguing with the sick mentality. You've got to get rid of the sickness. You've got to give it to him with a sledgehammer. When it needs a sledgehammer, nothing else will work. If you say my man, my hero is what you say, then yours is worse. Any standard. Now, you know, speaks about the Bani Israel. It's amazing. You see, in 1967, soon after the Six Day War, I was around one of these tours of mine, lecturing. And the Jewish society here, students of the university, they saw some of our Edwards, like you might have seen in the Argus. So they saw some of our Edwards in the newspapers, and they phoned the organizers then. He says, look, man, this Mr. Didat of yours, won't he come and speak to us in our clubhouse in Rondibosch? They had purchased a church. The Jewish boys had purchased a church and made it into a club. We would like him to come and speak to us. Actually, at the back of the mind, it was soon after the Six Day War. They wanted to see how the Muslim cringe before them. They said, yes, yeah, well, you know, you gave knocked health into us. And cry and bewail. Oh, so we'll do, fix you up in the future. We'll do this and we'll do that. They wanted to enjoy, get sadistic pleasure, you see, in working upon us. They want to know whether. This is my privilege. <laughs> I can't say no. There's a sickness I have. <laughs> and according to the appointment, I will go there. And the chairman introduces me to the audience, Mr. Didard, you know, the great man from Durban of the Islamic Propagation Center, and so on, so on, so on, so And now to Mr. Didard. So Didard stands. And what I read to you at the beginning. You remember? It's a dua from the Holy Quran. The words of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Allah bari ta'ala's recording. Qala rabbi shirah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafkahu qawli. Now while I'm saying that, I can see the people straining. He said, look, I thought this guy's going to speak in English. But he's talking something gibberish. <laughs> what, what is he talking? So I had to say, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen, I said, I'm not trying to hypnotize you people or to mesmerize you people with incantations. And this is a prayer of the Holy Prophet Moses. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, his prayer, this is his prayer. When he was commanded by Allah Baritara to go and liberate his people, in trepidation, terrified, he cried out to Allah. Qala, he said, Rabbi shirahli sadri. So, oh my Lord, expand for me my breast. Means make me brave. Wa amri. And make my task easy for me. Wahlul uqdatam min lisani. And remove the impediment from my speech. Yafkahu qawli. That they may understand what I have to say. This is his prayer. So I said, I have more need to offer such a prayer than Moses. Because... Moses only used to stutter. He used to stutter. I have more reasons to pray because I'm speaking on different level to a people. First place, English is not my mother tongue. The bulk of you, you speak English as your mother tongue, the Jews. They don't speak Hebrew here in South Africa. So English is a foreign language to me, number one. Number two, in communication, opposed to one another. You know from the very beginning that this guy is of the opposite camp. So your minds and heart are tightened. So now what is he going to say now? So in communication, this is another barrier, psychological barrier. So I'm trying to say something and it can have an opposite effect, an adverse impression. And it happens again and again. The guy is emotionally worked up. He's not listening. What you are saying, he's listening to something else. What is in his mind, he's listening there. He's not listening to our words. So I said, there's another problem. So I pray to God Almighty that may He solve this problem, that when I speak to you, that you may be able to understand what I want to say, what I want to share. And I says, you know, this holy prophet Moses, your prophet, I didn't know that he was the prophet of the Jews. 
And wallah, I'm not lying. As a young man, if you, anybody asked me, who is Musa alayhi salam? He says, Abu Nabi. Who is Dawud alayhi salam? I didn't know that they were prophets of the Jews. They are all our prophets. We accept them. We accept them all. And this is how we said. I said, we give our children Jewish names. But we don't think that they're Jewish names. When we give them these names, we said these are the names of the righteous servants of God. Musa, my eldest son is Ibrahim, same as Abraham. My youngest son is Yusuf, same as Joseph. My brother-in-law is Musa, same as Moshe. Look, we give these names to our children. Our fathers, our brothers, they have these Jewish names. But we are not thinking that they're Jewish. They are the names of the righteous servants of God. Then I says, what is the difference between us? When we take the names of these Jewish prophets, we never take the holy names without saying, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Revered Moses, may peace be upon him. Hazrat Dawood alayhi salam, Revered David, may peace be upon him. Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam, Revered Solomon, may peace be upon him. This is how we talk about the prophets of the Jews. If our learned men, our Imam, if he dares to speak in the masjid and say, Musa, for Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, We'll have to kick him out. No. And Dawud alayhi salam says, Dawud. Without saying Hazrat Musa alayhi salam or Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam. They'll be kicked out. This is how the love and respect we have for the Jewish prophets of the Jews. What is the difference between us? So I said, I started reading from the Holy Quran. Which I share with you now. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I'm reading from Surah Baqarah. You can find that in the Quran under B, Baqarah. Or chapter 2, you can easily find that. Verse 47 to 49, I'm reading. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya Bani Israel, askuru, ni'mati yallati an'amtu alaykum, wa anni faddaltukum ala l'alameen. So, O oh, children of Israel, O oh, children of Israel, look at the respectful way Allah Barit Allah is addressing them. Not all oh, you Jews, you renegades, you vagabonds, you cutthroats, you rebellious people. Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati yallati anamtu alaykum. O children of Israel, remember the special favors which I did unto you. Wa'anni faddaltukum ala alameen. And that I preferred you to all others for my message. The guidance of God was to be shared to the whole world. Allah chose them, sent prophets after prophets to them to do that job. Starting from chapter 2, verse 40, 46. Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati yallati anamtu alaykum. So, O children of Israel, call to mind the special favors which I bestowed upon you. Wa awfu bi ahdi, ufi bi ahdikum. Wa ya ya farhaboon. And fulfill your covenant with me as I fulfill my covenant with you. Wa iya ya farhaboon. And fear me and me alone. Who is talking? The Holy Prophet Muhammad? Is he telling you, fear me and me alone? No. Is God Almighty talking through him? O oh, children of Israel, call to mind the special favors which I did unto you. And fulfill your covenant with me as I fulfill my covenant with you. وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ And believe in what I reveal, confirming the revelation which is with you. Nothing new. The Jew says, he is made to say that God Almighty is absolutely unique. He has no partners, he has no sons. God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. And we give our hand of acceptance to the Jew that we believe as you believe. He says no eating of the flesh of swine. We say we won't eat it. He says no eating of blood. We say we won't touch it. He says circumcision. We say we are all circumcised. What more do you want? You see, Islam is Judaism made universal. It's the same religion on a universal level. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. We are prepared to accept anybody, everybody. Some of our brothers, whether you are a Hottentot or a Bushman or a Bantu or a colored, whatever you are, or a Chinese, whatever you are, come, become our brothers. It is not a racial religion. Judaism is a racial religion. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. They don't want you. And believe in what I reveal, confirming the revelation which is already with you. The Quran is a confirmation. And be not the first to reject faith herein. 
you should be the last fellow. Because everything is confirming, whatever you want to say, we are saying it far better than what you can say yourself. The manner in which Allah reasons and appeals to the Jews, it is not to be found in their own holy scriptures. The own holy scriptures, Musa salam condemns them. All the prophets condemn them. It's you, Hazrat Musa salam says to the Jews, have been rebellious against the Lord since the day I knew you. This is what you are. You have been a rebellious people, rebelling against God. They murmured in the wilderness. Not only they, the people, but according to the scriptures, their own holy scriptures, Harun, when he married an Ethiopian woman, Hazrat Musa, according to the Bible, besides his wife Zipporah, must be a Jew like himself, now he goes and marry an Ethiopian woman, an African woman, a Bantu woman, an Abyssinian. And they murmured against him. They complained. They said, this guy, you know, he's gone mad, this Musa, going and marrying that black ducky. What has he seen in her? Look at her. Huh? With thick lips and, you know, cold black. What has he seen in her? So Allah, because of this racism, look, this sickness is there with them from the beginning. Leave out Hajra one side. Against Hadith Musa, alayhi salam, they're complaining. Who? A Nabi of Allah, according to them. Harun, alayhi salam, is complaining against his own brother. And his sister Miriam is complaining. So Allah struck with leprosy. For the racism. Racist from the word go. And for that racism, they're getting a knock. For a thousand years, they're racist. They are now supposed to be the fittest people to fight against racism. Because they know what racism means. They should be the guides of mankind to tell people, look, this is a sickness. Because of racism, Hitler destroyed six million of them. Those programs against the Jews. What for? Racism. They are the fittest people to fight against racism. Well qualified. Best qualified people on earth. Are they? But no, they don't want to do the job. They become racist themselves now. What the Germans did to them, now they're doing to the Palestinians. They so said, look, this is our land. This guy says 2,000 years ago, our great-grandfathers were there. You have such love and feeling? Your great-grandfathers were 2,000 years ago. He said, yes. You never smelled this land. Now you come and grab it from our hand. But look, he said, look, I, my father died and he was buried there. I know, I buried him myself. This is my place, this is my land. Who has a greater right to that land? You, your great-grandfathers were 2,000 years ago. Not on this piece of land. Palestine was big, they could be anywhere. Now you come and rob me of my land? My father was there, my grandfather was there, and I was born there, me, myself. And you kick me out. Who has a greater right to this land? Now you want to go and have Camp David Accord. With who? With Egypt. I said, look, the house is mine. Talk to me. He said, no, I want to talk to Egypt. I want to talk to Jordan. He said, who's Jordan and who's Egypt? Whose house is this? You robbed me of my house. The basic thing, you steal my property, talk to me. Now you want to settle with Mr. Muhammad. I said, look, what right has he to settle my affairs with you? Me, come to me, ask me. Say, well, brother, forgive me. Look, I spent it already. You know, maybe one day I will try and rectify this. Look, talk to me. Maybe I'll give in. I'll give in. And the Arab is, Allah has made him that. Allah says so. It's Halim, Ismail, and his children. Halim means submissive, suffering. They're patient. 